What we're going to look at in this video is the forecast function in Power BI Desktop. And the forecast function will work on a time series of data as long as you've got a minimum of six time series points. And the forecast function is used on a line chart and it can be found in the analytics pane of the line chart. Now the forecast function in Power BI is based on an established suite of methods for time series predictions called exponential smoothing. Now exponential smoothing basically takes your data, looks at how seasonal it is and looks at if there's any surprises and then it kind of smooths the data out and if you are familiar with statistics you would already be familiar with exponential smoothing. So let's have a look at our data set and what we have in our data set, I've actually filtered the publicly available Walmart sales data for one particular store for two years. And we have a sales point for every single week in the year. And we also have the weekly sales. We can really ignore these other fields. We have whether there was a holiday in the week or whether it was a week number. But for this exercise, we can ignore the other fields. And what we're gonna do is we are going to plot our date and we are going to plot our weekly sales. And I'll just make this a little bit bigger. Now the date that we have selected is in the date type date and time and like I said we need a minimum of six date points for the forecast function to actually work. Now let's change this to a line chart and we can see now that it's very very easy with a line chart to actually spot trends in your data and peaks in your data. But what we want to do is we want to add a forecast. So we want to predict based on this past data, we want to predict what our future data is going to look like. So we can go into our analysis view and in our analysis view, we have our little forecast button. Now, if the forecast button isn't here, you need to make sure that you have six data points. It also won't appear if you are using a time series and you have drilled down on your data set, it may not work. It also may not appear if you have more than one series of data on your line chart. So there are some restrictions at the moment to the forecast feature in Power BI. So to start getting your data to forecast, what you need to do is click add. And you'll see where an I clicked add there that we got this straight line and we have this gray upper and outer bound, so our upper and our lower bound scales. And this line is very straight, it doesn't look like a very accurate forecast at the moment. But what we can do is we can start playing around with the forecasting tool to get this forecast looking more like our past data. So the first thing is we have our forecast length and at the moment it's saying points. So that means it's taking 10 points of data and it's just looking at that. But what we want to do is we want to look at the months. Now we have weeks, but we weeks aren't available. So let's look at months. And our forecast length is going to be for 12 months. So we're going to forecast for the next 12 months. For the moment, we're going to ignore this ignore last and we'll go back to that in a couple of minutes. But next, we're going to look at the confidence interval. Now, if you're familiar with statistics, you'd be already familiar with the confidence interval. But basically what the comfort in confidence interval says is that if we were to run this test on a different sample of data representing the same population, 95% of the time we are going to get a similar result. And we're fairly confident that within this upper bound and lower bound, your actual result is going to fall. Now, as I said, that line is very straight at the moment and, you know, it's reaching up very high above the sales for the previous two years and below the sales. So at the moment, you could nearly be 100% sure that your sales is going to fall within that. But now what we're going to do is we're going to look at this seasonality and this points 
that it's available down here. Now, what does this mean? Basically, the exponential smoothing looks at seasonality. And in here, it's asking you for points. So how many points have you got? Well, you, what you need to do is you need to look at one cycle of your data. And one cycle of our data is 12 months because we have two years of data and each data is 12 months and we're forecasting in months. So we have 12 months of data in a, in a cycle, but we don't have 12 data points. What we have is a data point for every week. So we have 52, actually we have 53 data points in one of our years. Now, if you had data for every single day, you'd put in 365 because you'd have 365 data points in a 12 month cycle and hit apply. Now we can see our forecast has changed from that straight line to a trend that looks very similar to the trend that existed in the past. And if we hover over it, we get a tool tip and our tool tip gives us the forecast. It gives us the upper bound and it also gives us the lower bound. So how do you know if your forecasting is any use? If it's accurate if it's actually going to work well with the upper bound and lower bound we have a good range that we're working in between but what we can do is we can hindcast so we can look back at our forecast and see if it matches our actual data so to do this we go back to our ignore last and for this example let's just say we ignore the last two months and we will change our forecast length to 14. Now, the reason I'm changing it to 14 is so that we still have 12 months forecast, but we have two months hindcast. Let me hit apply and you'll see what we mean. So now we see our forecast bar has moved back two months. It's gone back to within where we have actual data. And we can see that the trend and the values for the forecast and the actual aren't too far off except for this last particular day here but they're not too far off the trend is following we could go back a little bit further let's go back four months and we'll see again that our actual and our forecast figures are looking quite similar so we can assume from this then that our forecast months are actually going to be rather accurate now, another thing that you need to consider is you need to consider your user and the person that looks at this visual, can they see straight away that these two sets of data are actually different data points, that one is a forecast and one is actual? Well, there is an option here to change the color so you can make the data stand out a little more if you want the data to stand out a little more. You can change the color, you can change the style to a dotted line, a dashed line or a full line as we had. We also can change the confidence range. We can change it to lines and they're very, very light lines or you can have the fill like what we had. And with the fill, you can also increase or you can decrease the transparency. And you would do this to make sure that the data actually stands out and the user is able to understand the difference between one set of data and the next set of data. If you have enjoyed this video, I hope you will give it the thumbs up. Don't forget to like and share. You can also subscribe to my channel. And if you have any feedback or comments or you're enjoying this series of videos that I'm making, please do use the comments box below. Hi, my name is Paula and thanks for watching. Here at the Excel Club, I offer online Excel and Power BI courses for all levels. We have free courses to get you started and premium courses on more advanced and specialized Excel and Power BI training. You can access these courses on the website and from our apps and there's links below the video, so please do explore them. We also offer custom Power BI and Excel solutions. So if you want to create custom financial models or a Power BI dashboard, then I can help you. You can find contact details also on the website. 
If you haven't already, I hope that you'll take the time now to give this video the thumbs up, like and subscribe. Don't be shy, feel free to comment below and say hi. See you next time. Bye now.